My name's George Young from Master Dryers and as part of the Power Farming Getting the Best From series I'm going to be talking about mobile dryers today. With a batch dryer the first operation is your filling of the machine. So once you've filled the machine it will then run through its, its cycle. So the most important bit really to get the grain in there is your filling auger here. Um, there's a filling hopper that connects to this and when engaging the, the filling hopper you have to make sure that the, the drive dogs are aligned correctly would be one of your first operations to do before you start drying and then the, the grain goes through to the middle of the machine. Uh, this machine is a 20 ton model and this has got the, the faster loading auger so this will load grain at 90 tons an hour so if you're filling with say a hopper over the top of the filling auger if you are running with a teleporter with a two ton bucket you should struggle to keep up with it hopefully. When you're setting up the machine you have um, eight jacks to make sure that the machine is level so that when you fill the machine obviously there's a lot of weight in it that it's fully supported and that it's not going to fall over. It needs to be nice level firm ground. Uh, mounted on the machine there's two spirit levels one for the front to back and one to the left to right so make sure that it's level in both directions and once you've finished leveling the machine you have a safety lock that um, holds the jack in place so it doesn't um, vibrate up during the operation of the machine. The centre auger is a key part of the machine. This will lift the grain up and over the top of this plenum chamber here at 70 tonnes an hour. So that is what creates your drying effect is the, machine, is the grain recirculating through the machine. The centre auger receives its grease from the outside here. There's a bank of grease nipples which do the centre auger as well as um, the other components that drive the agitators and the gears on the, the bottom of the dryer which are all externally banked to the outside here. This machine is electrically driven so it requires a three phase electric supply. You can also have a PTO driven machine where you require a tractor um, and a PTO shaft to dry it, drive it and both are diesel or kerosene fired and there is also a, a gas alternative available as well. This is an 18 and a half kilowatt motor which is direct drive onto the fan that supplies the air to the, the plenum chamber in the center of the dryer for doing your drying. This is the fan at the front of that 18 and a half kilowatt motor. Um, at the start of the season you should make sure that the, the fan is clean and that there's no debris built up over the course of your drying season and that all the, the fan blades are in good condition um, and that's your sort of only check you need to do on your, your fan. This is your burner fan motor, which as well as supplying the air to the burner itself, drives your mechanical fuel pump on the end of it, supplying the fuel for the burner to burn. This is your main control panel where you operate the dryer from. So in here you have your, your main isolator from your three phase supply, and you also have your PLC unit, which is the brains of the operation. And then you have your buttons to start your various processes. The first button, is your center auger button which is lifting the grain up the middle of the dryer. Your first button is your center auger button which lifts the grain up the middle of the dryer. Once that is running that will then allow you to start your filling auger which is going to pull the grain in the, the back of the dryer to fill it up. Um, that will stay on until either you stop it manually or it has an electronic cut off on the top which stops the filling auger. At that stage you can start your, your main fan that we looked at earlier that will ramp up on a star delta and get up to full speed and then at that stage you can start your burner which is going to start your drying cycle. The burner will stay on to your crop temperature you've set where it will turn off. It will then start its cooling phase and run for a prescribed time which you've set in your PLC and at the end of that time it will either stop or if you've told it to the machine will unload itself into your dry store or trailer as however you're set up. When the burner is attached to the front of the dryer here, um, the heat blows into the centre of this stainless steel combustion chamber and that is where your heat exchange takes place which will hopefully dry your crops. Two motors in the middle of the machine here. One is your centre auger motor which is um, belt driven to the, the centre auger and one is your filling auger motor which is belt driven with a PTO shaft which drives your filling auger. In terms of maintenance, your centre auger belts have a, a tensioner on there which you have to check that the, the belts are evenly taut at the start of a season and that the belts are in good condition. Um, it's a similar situation for the filling auger belts. You have to check that they're 
A, tension correctly, and B, that they're in good condition before you start your season. This machine is fitted with a 760 litre tank. Um, the alternative is to plumb it into a, a fixed tank and you can obviously have a larger capacity of fuel then so there's less daily filling up of the machine. An average guide to fuel usage should be around a litre of fuel per percent of moisture you're taking out per tonne of grain through the machine. A good pre-season check to do is to check that your plenum chamber in the centre of the machine here, that all the, the holes in it are clean and if they, any of them need blowing out you can use an airline or you can brush them off and also to check inside for any sort of debris build up of chaff or straw and dust is a good idea to, to blow it off before you start the season and to check it during the course of the season to check that there's no excessive build up of material in there. This is one of the three agitators inside the centre of the machine that makes sure that the grain stays constantly on the move and that no hot spots develop inside the machine. This particular machine is fitted with auto lube, so rather than your external grease banks, it greases periodically to pres in prescribed doses to the different grease nipples on the machine. This is the, the burning unit which is responsible for the, the drying of the grain. Um, the things to check at the beginning of your season is A, that there's no dust or debris built up around your two nozzles here, and also that you've got a, the gap between your electrodes hasn't been blocked by any materials, and also that in the top of the burner there you can see that there's a, a photo cell that looks for the flame, and the lens of that needs to be kept clean. So you need to make sure there's no dust or debris built up on the lens of the photo cell, um, and that should give you hassle-free running. <laughs> um, the burner comes with a fuel pressure cage which indicates that the, the fuel is being supplied correctly. It should run at around about 200 psi, and if there's any flickering of the needle or anything like that, that's probably an indication that your fuel filters are starting to get blocked, and then you'd, you'd check further down the line. Um, your main filter is here from the tank and from here it goes to your fuel pump which also has a, a washable gauze filter and from there it goes to your nozzles which have another gauze filter on the back of them. So your three points of filtration. Um, on this machine you've got a bubble type auger so on your centre auger at the top of it is an extraction hood where dust and chaff can be sucked off and removed so to improve your sample. To adjust the amount of suction you have a, a collar on your dust extraction fan here and if you slide the, the collar up basically that increases the amount of suction and if you slide it down that decreases the amount of suction. Um, and you set that to your different crops. So for rape, you would have the least amount of suction and for peas and beans, you would almost have this fully shut. On the electrically driven machines you have a double drive dog so you just have to check the orientation of your top auger before you winch it up with your cable to make sure that you haven't got a gap in your centre auger otherwise this can stall the centre auger.